Hi there, my name is Ian Spence from Mac Tuts Plus. In this video, we are going to look at some of the ways that you can password protect your private files on your Mac. Everybody has secrets, and whether there's some naughty pics from college or a list of your high school crushes, you have files on your Mac that you don't want just anybody to see. While OSX unfortunately doesn't just let you add a password to any old file, there are some methods that you can use to password protect your sensitive information. While most of the methods I'll go over in this video are secure, not all of them are perfect. There are literally thousands of pieces of software that only purpose they have is to break password protected documents. At the end of this video, I will go over some tips that you can follow to help keep your documents even more safe. The first method I'll go over in this video is called MacHider. MacHider is a one of a kind application from MacPaw that adds a feature that should be in every operating system out there the ability to hide files and password protect their visibility. It costs $20, but it has a free trial with a limit on files that you can have protected. You can get it from macpaw.com slash machider. Machider is a really easy to use interface. All you have to do is drop files or folders onto the application and switch on hide. Once activated, you will notice your files immediately disappear. Deactivating that feature will have the files appear again. If you want, you can create file groups to better organize the files that you have hidden. Let's create a new group by clicking the plus button at the bottom. Right click the newly created group and select edit group. Here you can apply a group name and icon. You can choose your own icon or choose from a list of theirs. Auto hide is an optional setting that causes MacHider to automatically hide the files within the group when it closes and unhide the file when it opens. Click Apply to save your changes. The last thing you need to do in MacHider is to enable a password. Click the green lock button in the toolbar to bring up the Preferences window. Check Require Password and enter a new password. Now when you open MacHider, you will have to provide that password to reveal your files. Don't forget that password. If you get locked out, you're going to have a real tough time getting those files back. While MacHider is a great way to password protect your files and folders, it costs money. If you're looking for a free way to protect your stuff, OSX has you covered for this one. It does come with a catch, however, but we'll get to that. When you download a new application, it most likely came in a DMG file. These are the files that you open up and you drag the app onto the applications folder to install it. It's really simple. It's called a disk image. It's like a folder, but it's technically a file. Through disk utility, you can create encrypted disk images that you can put your stuff in. Open up Disk Utility and click Create Image in the toolbar. Give your disk image a name. This will be visible on your system. Then give your image an image name. Make sure it's identifiable. The disk size is where it gets a bit tricky. I want to protect this folder and it's just shy of 20 megabytes. So back in Disk Utility, you want to set the disk size to a custom amount of 20 megabytes. Give it an extra megabyte or so, just so there's no issues later on. Leave the format as Mac OS Extended Journaled, and set the encryption to 256-bit AES. This will make it very secure. Click Create to create the disk image. Disk Utility will ask you to set a password for the image. Choose a safe password and enter it twice. Make sure that you disable the Remember Password and Keychain checkbox, Otherwise, you won't be asked to enter password when opening the disk. On your desktop, you will now see a new image mounted to your system. This is the image we just created. Let's go ahead and add the files we want to keep safe to the image. It will take a bit, as it needs to encrypt all of the data. Once done, close the image and unmount it from your system. The next time you want to access those files, Double click your DMG file and you'll be asked to enter your password. Remember not to save the password in your keychain though. The disk will mount and you can access your files. The catch to this method is that the disk image is locked to the file size you set when you created it. You will need to create a new image with a larger size if you need more space. If you own Microsoft Word for Mac, you can have it require a password to open the document from within the application. Open a Word document and then open Word Preferences. Select the Security tab. Here you can set a password to open the document and a password to edit the document. 
go ahead and enter a password that will be required when opening the file, and I'll enter a modification password as well. If you entered a modification password, I recommend you enable the read only recommendation checkbox. Click OK and re-enter your passwords. Keep in mind that these passwords will only apply to this document. Make sure to save your changes and close Word. Now will you notice that the document icon has a big lock on it and you can't quick view it without the password. Opening the document will prompt you to enter your view password. If you set an edit document password, it will also ask you to enter an edit document password, or you can choose to open the file as read only, meaning you can't make any modifications to it. Much like Microsoft Office Word, you can password protect Adobe PDF documents from within Adobe Acrobat. Keep in mind that this feature is not available for the free Adobe Reader. Open a PDF document in Acrobat, and click File and select Properties. Go to the Security tab, and under the Security tab, select the Security Method drop-down, and select Password Security. Then this freak show will open. Don't worry, all you have to do is enable the Require Password to Open Document checkbox, and enter a password. Click OK, and re-enter your password. Close the Properties window, and save your changes. Then you can go ahead and quit Acrobat. Just like the Word document, the PDF now has a big lock for an icon, and it can't be quick viewed. Opening the document will prompt you to enter a password. Entering that password correctly will let you see the document. File Vault is the last method we'll go over in this tutorial. While it doesn't actually make you enter a password when trying to open your files, it does encrypt all the data on your hard drive using the password that you have used for your user account meaning that if your computer was stolen, your data cannot be accessed without your password. This is done through hard drive encryption, or what Apple calls File Vault. If you own a MacBook, I highly recommend that you turn on File Vault, because your computer is at a much higher risk of being stolen than that of a desktop computer. File Vault is disabled by default. To enable it, make sure that you have at least two hours of free time ahead of you, because it does take quite a long time. Open System Preferences, and go to the Security and Privacy tab. Click the lock in the lower left corner to unlock these settings, and select Turn on File Vault. OS X will then make sure that you have a password for all the users on your computer. If you don't, the computer cannot be properly encrypted. It will then give you a 24 long character recovery key. Do not lose that key. You can have Apple store the key at any of their Apple stores or by phoning them. If you choose to let them keep it, set up three security questions. Once you've set up all the required settings, make yourself a cup of coffee and prepare for at least a 24 hour wait while your hard drive is encrypted. You may use your computer during the time of encrypting, but I don't recommend it. The more you use a computer, the longer it'll take to encrypt the data. After the disk has been locked, you'll be required to log into your Mac right after you've pressed the power button, rather than waiting till it's booted. This lets the computer unlock the hard drive with your password. Do not lose that recovery key. If you lose it, your data is gone. You cannot access it. Nobody can unlock the data once it's been encrypted, not even the folks at Apple. Write down the recovery key in a safe place or let Apple secure it. While most of the methods we covered in this video are secure, not all of them are impossible to crack. If you're worried about people taking your personal data from your computer, here are some great tips that you can follow to help keep your data even more safe. Tip number one, just don't put it on your computer. While it's nice to have a machine keep your data at hand, you don't always need to put it there. To put it simply, if you're scared about losing your data and don't need it on the computer, don't put it on the computer. There are plenty of great physical ways to keep your data safe, like a filing cabinet or a locked desk. Number two, don't share your passwords. It's such a simple thought, but I see so many people do it and get burned for it. Don't share your passwords, not even with your mother. Number three, make good passwords. There are plenty of great articles and tools on the internet that can help you make really strong, but memorable passwords. Keep in mind that it's not always humans that are trying to crack your data. There are computer programs that will do that as well. Number four, change your passwords. Make it a monthly or a bi-monthly habit to change your passwords. This is a really good way to help keep your files secure. Number five, 
Keep a password book. I have hundreds of different passwords I use, and it's simply impossible for me to remember all of them. Get yourself a journal or a notebook and write down your passwords. Keep it in a safe place. This is a great way to help prevent you from forgetting your passwords. Watch out for phishing scams. You've probably heard of them before. A phishing scam is a website that has disguised itself to look legit, but it actually just steals your information. Use an up-to-date browser like Google Chrome or Firefox, and always double-check the URL before entering any valuable information. Number seven, don't enter any valuable information on public Wi-Fi. Public Wi-Fi is a lifesaver, but it is in no way secure. Never enter any valuable information on a public Wi-Fi network. Other people can intercept that data and simply gain access to it. Number eight, find out what other people are saying. You're not the only one on the internet, and doing a quick Google search on a site is a great way to help make sure it's safe. Chances are, if the site isn't safe, someone has probably made a warning. Number nine, encrypt your backups. If you use Time Machine to backup your data, make sure you encrypt the backup disk so people can't just plug your computer into that drive and get your files. And finally, number 10, trust your gut. If a site looks suspicious, it probably is. I'm Ian Spence, and thank you for watching.